Hi guys and welcome to uh, Illustrator Demo 1.3. This is going to be focused on drawing shapes. Um, the file that you guys will have on the Google Classroom is a file that's supplied by Adobe and um, the basic uh, reason for this um, demo and exercise is to learn how to draw the shapes um, that you can see in the dotted lines. So the first thing I want to review is that you can change your workspace by going up the window, workspace, and then I like to play uh, or work within the Essentials Classic view. That just gives me lots of tools um, to operate with. We can also collapse our windows and, you know, just make sure that our space, you know, we have enough room to design and we know where all our tools are. If the... Um, artboard that you're working on is not filling the entire screen. You can also use control zero and that fits all of the artwork within the window, which is super helpful. What we're going to do here next is we have these three different shapes off to the side. One, uh, the first two is a rounded uh, square, the second one's a triangle, and then we have a combination here of a circle, a triangle, and two rectangles. Um, eventually at the end you can see we've got um, an illustration of a robot here and then you guys can go ahead and try to, ro to draw the same robot um, by drawing shapes over here to the right. So let's go ahead and start. I have my selection tool so what I need to do is create a rectangle with rounded corners. So first what I'm going to do is just select my rectangle tool. Again you can see that's hotkey M or I can just click once on that um, shape. You notice immediately these magenta lines start bouncing around. If they're not, you can go to view and click on smart guides and that will actually allow you to see those magenta lines. It's, that can be super helpful. I'm going to hit cancel. And what we're going to do is just click and drag to get um, a square like shape showing up here. <coughs> Excuse me. If you pull it to the degree where you actually see this magenta line going across, that means that it's a perfect square. You can also hold the shift key while doing this, and that'll make a perfect square. What we'll do first, if you ever apply some kind of keyboard uh, to the function, is release the mouse first, and then release the key. Um, and that way, whatever function you're applying will actually be carried through. Um, in our shape, you'll see this. Um, blue box that's surrounding the shape that's referred to as the bounding box. If that's not actually showing up, you want to go to view and it sh should show. Uh, perhaps in your case, it would say, it would say show bounding box right here. If it says hide bounding box, that that means that it's actually showing it. So that's that's basically what you want to see. Again, you can see the keyboard shortcut shift control B to hide or show your bounding box. And hit cancel. Um, within the actual shapes as well, you can see there's these little uh, corner widgets, and if you pull on them, so click and drag, you can see we start to actually like round corners of the square. And as you pull towards the center, it goes more towards the circle, and as you pull out, it just kind of rounds uh, each of the four corners of that square. Once I like what I see, I can let go, and that uh, rounded square is looking nice and pretty. Um, in order to deselect the shape, oftentimes I'll just hold down the control button, which will bring up my selection tool, and then I can just click off to the side and that deselects the square. You'll notice though I'm still in the rectangular tool, so if I want to switch completely out to the selection tool, I would have to actually select it here or use the hotkey V. I'm noticing that my stroke and fill are different colors, so the fill is white and the stroke is black. So I'm going to click on my stroke there and then click on this little square with the red line through it to make no stroke. And so you can see the stroke is now gone. <coughs> All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle. So I'm going to go back to my shapes palette. I'm going to click and hold, and then we're going to go down to the polygon tool. Um, I've shown some function in the polygon tool, so once you click and drag, it's going to pull out that, a polygon. This is a hexagon. Notice if I hold shift, it flattens the bottom, like as I scale, which is a kind of neat thing. 
I'm just going to go ahead and let go of the mouse and then let go of shift. I'm going to use hotkey V to get my selection tool. I can click and drag that polygon over here. Again, this is not a triangle. And so there's a few different ways that you can go about drawing a triangle. One is click the polygon tool and then you can use the down arrow on your keyboard until it turns into a triangle. That's the way that I've been drawing in class. But also, like once you've made the polygon tool, you'll see on the side of the bounding box here, there's another widget. Um, and if you hover over that little widget, click and drag um, up, it starts to actually change the polygon. So you can add sides to it or take sides away from it. So that's another function with the bounding box and the polygon tool that I want to show you guys there. So that's kind of a neat way to modify a polygon if you've already drawn it. You can also notice there's this corner widget that's in the triangle as well. So if you wanted to round the corners, you could as well. I'm going to go Control Z to undo that. The last shape we're going to draw is the ellipse. So I can go into my shapes palette, find the ellipse tool, hotkey L, and I can click and drag a little circle. You'll notice that when you draw the circle, when you get the two magenta crosshairs, that means it's a perfect circle. Again, to get that as well, you can hold the shift key in, in conjunction with that, and it should uh, draw you a perfect circle. Release the mouse, release shift. I'm going to get my selection tool, and I can click and move this in place. You can also nudge the object by using your keypad up, down, left, right. Um, to get that shape put into place. So I got my circle, great. Next thing I'm going to do is take my triangle. And I've shown this to some people. If you hold Alt, um, your selection, so long as you're in the selection tool, if you hold Alt and hover over the shape, um, you'll get double arrows so that when you click and drag that shape, um, it will actually copy it. So I'm clicking and dragging that triangle down here because I'm going to draw a triangle or need a triangle for this next little exercise. And then I'll let go of the mouse and then let go of Alt. I can then scale this down by hovering over the corner here and I can kind of get the right height. And then I can also pull the side widget there to scale it um, horizontally. Using the selection tool, I can put it in place and you can continue to make adjustments. If it's hard to see what you're doing, you can use Alt and scroll your wheel forward to zoom in on it, or you can also use Control plus and minus um, to get closer to the objects that you're drawing. So I'm lining this up again, and I'm adjusting my scale just to make it fit nicely. If ever this happens, you're in a group, you can also back out by hitting those arrows there. I've definitely run into that issue before. So I'm going to scale this up just a little bit, and then we can continue. Space bar, click, drag. You can also click on your wheel on the mouse and drag, and that actually gets you the space bar hand grab, which is kind of cool. Let's draw some rectangles so I can get my rectangle tool. If I start in the upper left-hand corner and click and drag, I can build that rectangle out from there. Another rectangle here. And there we go. Again, to click off, so I'm not just going to draw another rectangle, I can just hit V to get my selection tool. That's a great way to then not accidentally continue drawing shapes. Again, you can notice like I didn't get it perfectly here, but that's fine. Um, for the purpose of this, uh, uh, demo and exercise. I just want you to get a little bit more comfortable drawing shapes and placing them within Illustrator. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go into actually like drawing all the shapes here. Some of this is going to involve using the eyedropper tool, which I'll get into. I'll just do a quick demo on drawing the head and then also with arrangement of objects. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to get my rectangle tool. I'm going to start by drawing the background uh, shape of the head. There we go. Roughly in the right shape. I'm going to grab my corner widget and pull my corners in. 
again, just kind of like eyeballing it here. If I want to see my drawing in the background, again, I can use Shift X to kind of see where things are laying out. This is where I was saying, like, sometimes, depending on what you're tracing or drawing, you might want to see the background image. And that makes editing it um, much easier. So I'm just going to leave that shape like that for a bit, and then I'm going to draw my two eyes. So I'm going to go to my Ellipse tool. This is another cool trick where I believe it might be... If you hold Shift and Alt while you draw while you draw the circle, you can actually scale it from the center. So that Shift Alt, then click and drag a circle out. I'm going to use my keyboard up down arrow to kind of nudge it. And then I'm going to go Alt. Uh, let's see if this works actually. No, that didn't. Control Z. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, Control Copy and then Control Paste in place, which I basically just copied the circle and pasted it right on top. And then I'm going to use Alt and Shift, and I'm going to scale one of those circles in. So um, in the last exercise I was showing in that triangle exercise how to copy to paste in place. So you copied a triangle, you pasted it right in place, and then you scaled it. Uh, towards the center. I tend to use this quite frequently um, if I'm drawing situations where I have two shapes that are the same and one is within the other shape uh, directly in the center of it. So since I already drew this, there's no sense in drawing it again. So I can actually select both shapes by clicking and dragging over it with my selection tool. And then I can use the Alt key. I can click and drag. And then I can also hold Shift and it'll just pull it directly across from that original shape. Now where this can get strange is like, I've got all positive shapes. Eventually we're, we'll learn how to cut shapes um, out of other shapes. But if I go in and start to uh, transition back to full fills, we're gonna see that the eyes will actually disappear here. So I'm gonna go Shift X and now you're like, oh no, where'd it go? Like I lost, I lost, my, uh, I lost my eyeballs. I'm going to adjust that corner widget. There we go. Um, and so this is where using Control Y can be helpful because then you can actually see um, where your shapes are. However, if you know they're there, you can also search for it with your selection tool. So there's my selection tool. And I can look over here. I can hold Shift. And what we're going to do here is we want to actually like make both of these circles turn the background color so that when these pupils sit on top of it, they'll look as if they're um, sitting on top of that red. And so what I can do for that is like, right now it's a fill, so I'm gonna go to stroke, so now it's a full stroke. And then I'm gonna take this tool called the eyedropper tool, and you can see when you click the eyedropper tool and then you click something um, whose properties you want to duplicate, um, it will actually transfer that same thing. So in this case, the background has filled that color, it's transferring that fill color to those circles. I'm going to hit hotkey V. That gets my selection tool. I'm going to select these two eyes, holding shift. And then I'm going to go and transfer the stroke color, which is white, to the fill color, which is none. So I can hit this arrow, or I can also do shift X. And now I've got a head. I've got two red circles and then two white pupils sitting on top. Um, if for some reason, you build this in the wrong order. Um, you can also change the alignment of or arrangement of the objects by um, bringing forward, um, bringing to front, sending backward, or sending to back. And you can see there's these keyboard shortcuts that are associated with it as well. Shift, Control, right bracket, or Control, right bracket. So. Um, you can see shift kind of does the biggest move and then control right does a one step move. Control left goes one step back. Shift control left bracket will send it all the way to the back. So if I go like this and I go uh, control right bracket, you can see that background circle, the red circle ended up just covering up the pupil. And if I can go, if I go control left bracket, it puts it back in place. If I go control left bracket, again a few more times 
you can see that that red shape actually is now behind the head. So there's a way of just um, kind of layering shapes and considering them how, like what is sitting on top of what we'll end up previewing um, through uh, the layers, how they're kind of stacked on top of each other. One way to think about it is as if each of these shapes are just a piece of paper and you're orienting them by stacking them on top of each other. All right, that's all I'm going to cover for today in this demo. Um, you, again, download this file to your downloads folder. You're probably going to click on it, do the three dots, open a new window, and then three dots again and download. And then you should be able to search for it in Illustrator by going to File, Open, click on your downloads folder, and then you'll find the drawing shapes.ai file. All right, thanks guys.